Well, it's October, and uh, everybody realized that uh, there is a The Witches remake, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, man, I love this movie. Now, granted, The Witches is a beloved cult favorite. Hip but film. all of a sudden, fucking people crawling out of the fucking depths of fucking hell to, to be like, damn, homie, I'm going to die for this movie. Yeah. Like, where were you 50,000 times I wanted to talk about this movie? I'll tell you where, nowhere. But anyway... Everybody's fucking mad that they're remaking The Witches because everybody likes to get mad at remakes even though they've been around for fucking ever. It's either going to be good or it's not. End of story, you don't know until it happens. But you know what is good? At least in my opinion. Uh, the original The Witches, man, 1999. Nicholas Rogue directing. It's Jim, It's notable because it's Jim Henson's last movie before he totally croaked. And, uh, you know, so that era of the Henson influence kind of ended... And it's very apparent here. Uh, but we're going to talk about this flick, man, based on a Rao Dao classic. Most unwieldy name for a fucking person ever, by the way. Yeah, what is it? Rao the Dao? What is that? Like, if, if, if you hadn't written some classics, I would mad hate. Yeah, it's totally a punchable name. Who does He was a punchable guy, I got to say, though. You know, everybody kind of, like, is ignored the fact he's mad racist. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, dude. Just read James and the Giant Peach. Mega race. Damn, dude. Homie? Straight up calling us Mexicans crap. Like, damn, homie. You really? know what? Screw Raw Doll. He was a jerk, and everybody knows it, but uh, nobody says it. I didn't know it. Yeah, nobody cares about Raw Doll as a thing. But they do care about his books, which are pretty enjoyable. <laughs> I particularly enjoy it. It's, he just had such a weird yeah. way with well, the macabre uh, while making something that was basically for young adults or, or children so that's i think the most apparent with the witches which is which is a very morbid uh kind of, it's almost like a dark comedy where it's not more inclined to be for children you know um starts the great angelica houston as a grand high witch an image that imprinted itself in your childhood and a lot of people's childhood you hadn't even seen the movie I hadn't even seen it. but just the image of it horror horrified you and uh, it's something that's stuck in a lot of people's heads. A lot of people think this is a very scary movie. I don't think it is. I think it's a fun and whimsical movie with some scary elements in it. Uh, but, you know, to each their own in that regard. Scary is as subjective as it gets. What is not subjective, I offer to the fucking court, is this movie rules. Now, you, I'm just going to fucking go out on a limb here yeah, and say that... There's uh, something that needed to be stated and you're brought to bring it up yeah yeah so. you're doing some mad sleeping during this movie i was uh i haven't slept in like a little over a day um and you know right now i'm good and when I'm, we're talking we're good mm -hmm. but i guess the second the movie started i was mad yeah, mad ha fucking having a, having a hard time i'd say i saw about 70 percent of this movie mm-hmm um, so I'll judge that 70%. Yeah. So right now your fucking, uh, opinion is invalidated, but we'll still hear, <laughs> we'll still hear it. We'll still touch upon it, of course, for the sake of conversation. I'll, I'll say that the, <clears throat> my kind of in and outness made mm -hmm. this movie actually kind of gruesome in my eyes. Yeah, because you came into the worst <laughs> like, part, happening? as in the worst, as in like they're, uh, like a fucking carnival of, of the bizarre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's when you would wake up. Um, so yeah, but let's talk about this movie, man. Uh, it is based on a, on a classic children's book. Uh, I recently had an argument because you know I love to get in these online because they're super a waste of my time and everybody's time. Mad pathos. But somebody was like angry that they were going to remake this, and they were like, they're not going to be loyal to to the designs, the original design. What original designs? Raw Dog can't drop for shit. All right. If they were going to be loyal to those designs, we'd have the crappiest looking movie on earth. So. Thankfully, they weren't, and uh, we actually get uh, classic Henson Company designs here, man. You, you know, the, the kind of weird, jagged mm -hmm. creatures that are very clearly yeah. fake, but in that weird, likable way. Now, you're not 100% behind all the Henson designs, so I'm interested to see what you think of the uh, designs here. Yeah, sometimes I find Henson stuff looking uh, annoying. Um hideous as some yeah. might say but there's some obviously you can't deny that they got some good shit too oh yeah yeah of course man. that being said i gotta say homie freaking uh uh does a good hag <laughs> <laughs> i'm a hagite um fan of hags 
And as a hag fan, I was like, damn, homie, that's a good hag. Classic gruesome hags. hag. But uh, it's a hag. Yeah. You gotta be gruesome, at least 50% gruesome. The amount of hair on that hag, hag's, like, bumps was gruesome, dude. I was like, oh, gross. Gruesome bump hair is, it's, it's a tightrope to walk, you know, because it could be too gross and yeah, you're just out. You hate it. Great balance of hag bump hair. Yeah. <laughs> so a point to, to the movie on that. Uh, yeah, man, the effects just look great in this. Um, uh, to anybody going bemoaning uh, that physical effects are out the window, apparently, for this new one. I mean, look who's making it. A guy that's, like, obsessed with revolutionizing CGI. I think that's a good thing. You know, I, I realize that CGI is not ideal. Um, but for the remake, as, as, as for the remake, uh, Robert Zemeckis seems, seems determined to change the fucking field, the playing field, with CGI, so that at least gives me some heart uh, that he'll try something. Will it work? I don't know. Do you like Polar Express's hideous, soulless faces? Damn, homie. We'll find out. But as far as the effects here, they're all physical and uh, they look pretty great, man. There's, uh, do they look realistic? Of course not. But that's part of the whimsy of it, you know. Uh, we have this exaggerated hag with a Grand High Witch. And, of course, her, her fucking menagerie of hags. Cronies, yeah. Yeah, her cronies, which are like 50% dudes in that audience, by the way. It was like 93% hideous Yeah, there was a there. lot of dicks. <laughs> there was a lot of dicks in, yeah. the, in that meeting of witches. Um, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. They they're all got the testicle head going yeah. on. It's pretty gross. And the gruesome, like, uh like scab head some scabs were like straight up disgusting man they're like <laughs> yeah at least an inch deep and i was like oh yeah. gross gruesome scab heads now i'm a big fan of bald scab chicks heads. you know not naturally bald chicks yeah. that's gross <laughs> Damn, homie. <laughs> no i'm kidding uh, I, I have a weird quasi fetish for bald chicks this killed it right there on the spot <laughs> uh yeah man uh, uh good hag heads i guess yeah uh the the mouse effects are a big thing here uh they're fucking cute that's yeah, that's the thing you know i gotta say although i do have i have do have two things to say about the mouse effects all right one they are cute uh but also uh clearly they spent all the money on on the first on the main character mouse <laughs> the main mouse because uh <laughs> that what was the great, great kid's mouse name i forget Gunther stupid whatever. name man fattest i think uh, his name was aldred i think uh, <laughs> aldred's mouse aldred's mouse puppet wasn't that good uh, uh he, homie had like mad joints everywhere and it just didn't look great <laughs> but the main the main puppet looks really cute and really cool and it was actually kind of one of those moments where i was like i wonder how they how big they are you know obviously they're not that small you know the, in close-ups you can tell that the props are not what they're supposed to be you know there's He's in fries at one point. They did don't look like fries. Yeah. So I was kind of like curious. So it actually made me wonder like, damn, that's kind of cool. It is interesting. There was a point towards the end of the movie where right before Luke gets turned back into a human where it's just a guy in a mouse suit. That was weird. And it looks fucking weird. Yeah. Dude. That Hella was weird. That entire sequence was actually kind of horrifying for like visually. Like, what is this? Well, let's talk about that sequence because that sequence is what made Raul Dahl, who was still alive at the time when this movie was made, mm. hate this movie. <laughs> Oh, he yeah? actually loved the movie, but uh, when it was shown to him, uh, he cried, apparently. He was like, damn, this is great, you know? It captured what I wanted to capture, except for any racism that might have been in there. <laughs> he ca it captured it, right? But the thing is, the director wanted, uh, wanted Luke to go back to being a, a kid. And I kind of got to agree with Raul here. <laughs> what is that name it's not good stinks anyway i gotta agree with fucking doll on this one man uh the original ending would have been better in terms of you know the, the idea of unconditional love and and yeah. the, you know again supported by the idea that everything is okay as long as someone's there to love you it's great so the kid remaining as a mouse would have cemented that a lot better than let's just turn the kid back but they did have that fucking subplot with the other witch that's yeah. kind of being thrown to the side. So it would have it would have felt like what was up with that witch that keeps on you know. So whatever, I, I don't mind the ending. Don't get me wrong. I just do agree that the he should have stayed a mouse, because because one would have been better. But two and more importantly, mad cute mouse. True, and the <clears throat> the thought of a mad cute mouse hunting witches 
is pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. The thought of a granny hunt- hunting witch is, is fucking awesome. True. Uh, much more with a hella cute mouse. Yeah. Uh, Which, so, by yeah. the way, many a mouse was thrown and flung in this film. Uh, homie mouse just like straight up jumps like flying squirrels to things. But when you really think about it, that's just a mouse being thrown around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like food of the gods. Ro- up in here. Rowan Atkinson straight up be pitching into <laughs> fucking left field. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, hella mouse deaths probably <laughs> with this movie, but uh, worth it, I say. True. Uh, what? Uh, it sucks that you. I mean, it's my fault, really, dude. Because I know you, I knew you were tired, and I was like, still sprung this on you. It's a weirdly. It's such a weirdly structured movie. It's yeah. not a very traditionally structured, and that's kind of the one thing I, I love like most even, about it. Even when you think it's over, there's still like 15 minutes left. You know? Yeah, I mean, just the way it starts. It starts with yeah. like an exposition storytelling scene, which is one of my favorite fucking things in this movie. Uh, my fa- look, I know a lot of people go on and on about the witch and the, uh, the cool effects guys. Shut the hell up! Is what I say to those guys because. <laughs> their opinion doesn't matter to me my opinions matters to me baby doesn't matter to you though so i'm just babbling out my ass at this point but no no man all, all jokes aside what i love the most in this movie absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt is the relationship between the grandmother and luke uh it's sweet it reminds me a lot of my relationship with my grandmother. I don't know if it did that to you. You, you were hella snoring. Yeah. But, that was a bad story, dude. But that's the heart of the movie. That's the whole point of the movie. That's what moves the movie. I think it's it's it's, it's such a sweet relationship. And I'm very excited, again, to go against the grain of everybody all fucking chewing on the remake shit. I'm very excited to see Octavia Spencer take on the role of the grandmother. Because I absolutely love Octavia Spencer. And I think... Just seeing the trailer, just seeing her interact with this with this kid that's gonna I don't know his name, the kid that's gonna play the child Luke in in, in, in the new one. Uh I just wanna see that, you know. She seems like such a, a sweetheart, as is this grandmother. And she reminds me a lot of my grandmother and what I used to love to, to hear from my grandma. I used to like sit there and in entranced by her tales of fucking horror from her childhood. She had witch tales. She had great witch tales. I mean, she was a, a traditional nineteen twenties old mexican you know what i'm saying she got nothing but witch tales the occasional bat tail bat tail oh yeah baby there's bats <laughs> what the hell? and javelinas on occasion hey, but look man javelinas man javelinas hell yeah uh, <clears throat> yeah man the just the dynamic between luke and his grandmother is, is so sweet especially because luke is introduced to us as this kind of carefree kid uh that is very in love with with you know his parents and, and his grandmother and then tragedy strikes and all he has left is this one person in the world that cares for him so deeply it's just a such a sweet relationship and that's the main thing that i love about this movie and that beginning makes you understand what's important in this movie and why any of the events should matter at all with, with what's going on because as aforementioned the movie is structured so strangely Really, if you think about it, it just feels like things are just kind of happening. <laughs> There's no real traditional story plot structure, you know. It's just like, well, we're here now and this is happening. And the bulk of the movie is in Zotel where the paths of these characters cross. And then you're just kind of there with them, you know, until something happens. Uh, that could be dangerous because it could just get hella uninteresting. But I think they there's like a manic energy to the movie. You know, down to the way the camera moves and, and uh, you know, yeah, all that stuff. It's weird because, like, during the, like, the, the final, like, chaos sequence, I kind of mentioned it uh, when regards to the character effect of the of the rat mm-hmm. witch. But it, it, even in the way it was kind of filmed and shot and, like, the way it was so quickly, everything was happening. There's so a lot of chaos. It was very uh, dead alive you yeah. know, even the, even the weird angles and the, the camera and shit, it was just like, it was bizarre. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely, definitely a film that has its own identity, you know. So it would be interesting to see what the remake does to carve its own identity of its own, if anything at all. You know, I think that's really where it can slip, you know. Sliding. Will it uh, not manage to carve it, 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 its own niche in this type of weird film anyway you know subgenre anyway 
Uh, yes, no, maybe. I, I don't know. We'll see. It does got a three fingered hand. I think you're averse to three fingered hands. Actually, in kinda, a grossed out way. Yeah, it's disgusting, but it's a, it's a good start when it comes to hags. It's got a great cast, a new one. That's uh, that's that's a given for me. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. But this one's got a great cast too. We even got fucking Rowan Atkins in here. Fucking Bean. Mr. Bean? With the most. One of the greatest scowls of disgust ever. You know what I'm saying? Which is easily interchangeable with confusion if you're into Mr. Bean. Yeah. But I feel just... like there's a version out there that they just put in the Bean sounds. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Well, there is one character. Oh, what was that, man? Uh, yeah, the, the 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 maid that he's kind of having a little affair with. She has she has some weird, mad sounds in this. Yeah. What the it's fuck? Like a, like a Xena eel. Yeah. No explanation. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Rowan Atkinson and Jekyll Houston, and, and a lot of like actors that you really don't see, especially in American cinema. Uh commonly haven't seen commonly out of this fucking movie but they stand out so much you know they 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 they, they definitely make an impression uh and i think uh first of all um damn i forgot her name man but anyway granny there she's kind mm-hmm. of like the best character in my opinion in this movie uh way better than the grand high witch which i know a lot of people will hate me for that but fuck you i like grand high witch too just saying granny's the bee's knees uh and luke look man it's hard for a kid to come off as likable especially yeah. when you're just an asshole like us uh but he's a likable kid yeah. you know and, and it kind of ended up liking mortimer yeah uh, fat fatto whatever his fucking name is yeah yeah you know um there's character growth arcs there's a lot of little subplots that are that are whimsical and all tie into this event happening uh yeah th- this movie feels like it's bursting at the seams but the, they did Managed to somehow wrangle all of this madness into something that's that's kind of explosive fun. Uh, so, man, kudos to the filmmakers on that. Uh, anything you want to throw in, man, uh, bad or good, about your in and out viewing? I feel like uh, if you want to see like um, Morticia Adams still be bangable, uh, this is a good movie. That's still uh, man. yeah. She's definitely looking she's like a straight up mad. witch nowadays. She gotta be, yeah, she gotta be in the new one, just just without a makeup on. Yeah, when they take Anne Hathaway's face off, it's just her. It's gotta just be Angelica Houston. It's tragic, homie. Mad hideous. Yeah, <laughs> it's not looking good. I mean, granted, we could be high witches too. I mean, yeah, there's a, a lot point. of dongs yeah. in that crowd. That's a good point. You know, I feel like we have less hair than all those witches <laughs> and their bumps. <laughs> definitely less hair on my fucking groin. <laughs> I'm lying. It's Matt Harry. Yeah, anyway, what the hell? Uh, you got straight freaking uh, Richard Simmons down there. Damn, homie, it's bad. <laughs> I'm shaved in like a, a year. Damn, homie, gross. Fucking straight up Amazon rainforest. You get, you anyway, get, you gotta get some stay soft fro. Damn, I do. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Anything else, man? Good or bad about the movie? Well, I I'll say that even though I like mad slept, I still really enjoyed it. So I can only assume that I'll enjoy it more when I'm, like, not asleep. Um, uh, that being said, like I said, my weird in-and-out sleep made it way more horrifying than I assume it actually is. <laughs> I was just like, God, what is this? Yeah, you, kept, you kept popping in in the weirdest spots. So the, right now the movie to you is just this, like, stew of madness. Yeah, it lived up to my uh, childhood memory of seeing the the commercials for it between shows and thinking it was like some horrific film that I'm not meant to see. <laughs> yeah. You saw the horror cut. Yeah, dude. Inadvertently. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Would I classify this film as a horror f- film? Absolutely. It's a, it's a horror children's film, you know? And when those are good, they're really good. There's something that makes them stick out, you know, in the public consciousness. It, it, it seems to have a lot more favor in the eyes of the mass popular than normal you know horror fans tend to be very divided they like this subgenre but they'll stick to that and they'll hate on everything else and it's kind of like metal with the horror fans you know mm. there's people that are just holding the guard to their little thing here but i find in my experience that when it comes to a movie like this generally speaking people are across the board uh see it very favorably and have fond memories of it 
Um, this is a movie where the nostalgia holds up. You know what I'm saying? Like you have memories of this movie and it holds up because it's a quality movie. And I understand some people being kind of outraged at this new movie. Oh, the, the fucking damn near fucking blasphemy of daring to readapt something. Or I'm sorry, in their terms, remake something that's, you know, that they hold in, in high fucking, what's it called? Esteem. Esteem, yeah. Uh, but that that's how it goes, man. You know, you don't have to watch it, but... Stop Some crying, man. Yeah, yeah. Look, sometimes remakes are good. You know, we cry a lot about remakes, but the fact of the matter is that there's a lot of beloved remakes, and we conveniently forget them when a remake comes up to a movie that we like. Uh, there's a lot of great remakes. It may be a good one, man. You know, I saw that trailer, and yes, it doesn't have physical effects, but you know, I'm over it. We've been in the world of CGI since the fucking, you know overt cgi since the 90s obviously cgi predated that but we've been in a world of overt cgi since the fucking 90s we should be used to it by now it's not about the fucking effects it's about is the story going to be good or not i hope so they have a great cast uh you know zemeckis has directed some fucking classics uh and then there was a polar express boop uh god man tom <laughs> Hanks' face yeah man that was a that was a thing but Actually, anyway interestingly enough uh polar express was a source of horror in my childhood too so Inadvertent yeah. horror, no less. So, damn, homie. Uh, but we'll Perfect see, man. Person. Uh, we'll see about that. Uh, I'm open-minded. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and hope that. See, that's the thing. Unlike a lot of people, I don't want it to beat the original. I just want it to be a good movie, and maybe it does, maybe it doesn't beat the original. But I will not. I refuse to form a judgment on it until I actually see it, and uh, uh, you know, we'll see then. In the meantime. We have the fucking original. Why get up in arms? We still have this original that you can love and hold close to your heart. If anything, this new one, whether it's good or bad, is going to call attention to the original and then more eyes will be on it. Uh, you know, a lot of people didn't like this movie when it came out. It failed hard at the box office. You know, it's only the fact that it had good word of mouth and that, you know, it's a quality movie that made its cult grow. And here we are years later over fucking... It's three decades later, to be precise, and and uh, you know it's it's held in in the highest of esteems in a lot of fucking circles. So, you know, time will tell. The point is, here it is. We're gonna talk about the, what we're gonna rate this movie. Again, your rating is invalidated by the sure fact that you were in and out of the Z's, but you still get a rating. You still get to say what it is, what you think of what you did see. On a scale of one to ten, what do you give this one? Give it to me. I'll give it... I'm not going to go deep into it because literally my brain shut down during this movie. That being said, I'll give it like a straight 7.5 because it is still very enjoyable. But I did miss a huge chunk of it, so mm -hmm. my, my my opinion matters not. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, uh, usually it doesn't across the board, but... I mean, near does yours, to be fair. Yeah, nobody's opinion matters <laughs> at all. We're literally going to die and become dust. Damn, homie. It's not good, but anyway, it's bad. Uh, <laughs> this movie is is great, man. It has a lot of heart. Uh, I think people, again, this is all based on past conversations and reactions, and now currently this slew of reactions. People are hung up on kind of like the wrong end of this movie. Mm. You know what I'm saying? This is a movie with heart, and it has uh, a lot of it. You know. And that's kind of like what drives the movie, man. It's what's important about it. And uh, it's good at that. You know, it's really good at that. And on top of that, yes, it's fun to look at. It's, it's fun to experience. It's weird as hell. You know, it's a really strange movie. And it's a very non-traditional structure and, and approach to a movie. Uh, it's lovely for both children and adults to see this. Then uh, there's just, it's frothing with like this energy and creativity that you know when when it comes across it, it's worthy to know i'm gonna give the witches 1990 a solid niner baby it's a good one man check it out if you haven't seen it definitely check it out before you see the new one but don't 
check it out before you see the new one if you're going to be sitting the whole time going, hmm, how's I this like one? This. Yeah, I mean, God, you got to open your mind, also, guys. Also, don't watch it if you're going to be freaking texting and updating everyone who clearly doesn't give a shit about your opinion online. I hate that. I just want to bring that up. Okay? Yeah, that's not cool, right? Who does that shit, homie? Watch the God... Anyway. Who texts during a movie? Who does that? Tell you who. Too many people. But anyway. Evens, that's uh, Check out The Witches if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, let us know what you think about it. Uh, and get ready. I guess HBO Max is is bought the release for The Witches, and so they're going to release it. Or actually, it's because it's a Warner Brothers thing. Mm. You know, HBO Max getting on it. You know, they're like, homie, we just got mad releases. Yeah. You know? I'm going to pay, it. charge freaking 30 bucks for the Disney hit film. So let us know. We'll hopefully be reviewing by the end of October the new witches. It's it's coming on October thirty first, I think. Uh, hopefully, unless something happens, i.e., mad death. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and see what's up with that. Uh, we're out. Hit like, share, subscribe, guys.